Hey man, what's your bacon? I think you gotta tell everybody what that means first. It's that extra side topping of main course in life that makes everything about your day even better. Whether it's movies, music, cooking, paranormal, video games, whatever it is that helps you unwind, maybe you can get a little bit inspired. We talk to hot new bands. We are Felicity. And this is Bradley from Emerosa. TV personalities. Hi, my name is Rachel Pizzolatto. Hi, my name is Patty Nagley. Wrestling personalities. Mm. Hi everybody, I am Eric Bischoff. WWE Hall of Famer. Godfather here. Actors. This is Sean Kanan. Thank you for joining us. Hello, podcasters. Emo Social Club. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dave Schrader. Pretty much any like-minded creative across all facets of the entertainment industry. You can check out Bacon is My Podcast on all streaming platforms, as well as the Strangerhood TV YouTube channel. New episodes dropping every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Listen in when we find the answer to the question, what's your bacon? This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Deluxe Edition with Casey and Ray. You know why I'm doing that this week? Why? Because I asked a bunch of questions this week as if I was the host of this stupid show. It's not a stupid <laughs> show. <laughs> but uh, more importantly, that only happens for one reason usually, and it's because we have a returning guest. And as always, this woman knocked it out of the park. She is fantastic, funny, beautiful, great storyteller. Patrick Darbo. Yeah. Back again. Yeah, this was another fun episode. We just went into this one, just had a regular old conversation with Patrika. And uh what what a fun time. Yeah, she's she's delightful. I like talking to her. And you know, that style of interview I like because we already did the movie crap with her the first time, you know. Yeah. Oh, you're in this movie. Yes, I am. Oh, you're in this movie. Yes, I am. This time we just had a conversation. It's it's kind of like what we do with Mark now. Yeah, we, we just talk to people. Yep. Yeah, we got her take on uh, a lot of the uh, the AI stuff that that yeah. everyone's talking about. You know, it is unfortunately the future of uh, everything. I use it every week. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's the future. I am so looking forward to when I don't have to do anything and I'm just an AI image and talky thing. It's going to be awesome. I'm working on it, buddy. I'm working on it. Uh, I know. Cause you know, sometimes I'm really sleepy when we do the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you say we get into this interview with Patrika right after this quick house cleaning? We are a part of the Deluxe Edition Network. You can find all of the other great shows over at deluxeeditionnetwork.com. The podcasts of the month this month are Bacon is My Podcast and The Beard Laws Show. Go check them out both on YouTube or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Deluxeeditionnetwork.com. You can find all of our previous shows over at deluxeedition.show. Or go over and check out the Instagram page over at Deluxe Edition Pod. What kind of stuff are you doing over there, right? Oh, not that much. I do mostly memes, but you get to see a, a, a lot of the reels. So if you're, you know, you want to get a little quick taste of what's coming up, you get some of those over there. Yeah, there's a lot of reels going on over there. I've got a lot of reels scheduled to come out when Ray can't hen handle the memes. Uh, let's see. We are on Facebook. Come check us out. Facebook.com slash Deluxe Edition Pod. If you would like to buy a t-shirt, go over to whatamaneuver.net slash collection slash deluxe dash pod. Email us. Deluxe Edition Pod at gmail.com. And let's see, right? Today's episode is brought to you by Copper John's Beard. Go over to copperjohnsbeard.com and use code deluxe 10 at checkout for 10 percent off they got some really great beard stuff over there they use ionic inland sea minerals no other beard company on the planet uses that stuff so go check it out and that's mm -hmm. it here is our chat with patrika darbo hi patrika hi guys how are you good how are you 
I'm hanging in there, baby. I'm learning lines now because I was just asked back to days of our lives. So, ah. which is nice. It's nice to know that they like you and they write for you. However, uh, this is one of those things that I'm asked back after what I've been doing it since 98. And this time, though, I don't air until October. That's how far ahead they are. I guess wow. to keep up with Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> So what other things have you been up to other than uh, learning lines today? Well, you know, my super, my super um, bowl commercials running, which mm -hmm. I got to do. And then I did um, the big divas movie with um, all the, you know, divas that, that was on at Christmas and things. But remember there was a strike last year, so there's mm -hmm. really not a lot to report that's new. Um, though I walked the picket line for, um, I guess it was two and a half hours with a bunch of friends. And then we all walked back to my house because they'd park their cars here because there's plenty of parking. Then <laughs> I proceeded to trip up my own front steps and broke my shoulder. <laughs> How fun that was. And even though I broke my shoulder, I got the shingles after two shots. And um, the pain was the worst I have ever felt in my life. Bless you. Wow. Thank so you. that's what I've been up to. Huh. Well, what, uh, well, let's look at the bright side of the strike. What's uh, <laughs> some of the, the funnier signs you saw out there? Because a lot of comedians were out there with their signs, and I saw some good ones. You know, um, I, I don't remember all the signs, but I will tell you that it, was, it wasn't it was just people that are background or just, you know, day players or, you know, it was – major stars were supporting they were out there too like that because unless the production company had signed uh, waivers or and and agreed to our terms they couldn't start and a lot of the production companies did and so some of them went to work others when it was the wga strike nobody would cross that picket line in respect and then we marched with the wga and then the wga marched with us <laughs> so um, it was a, a very, um, a unity that was, um, very nice, very nice. So, so how did they resolve this thing? What did, uh, you, the, the, the actors and the writers end up getting out of all of this? Uh, well, we're getting a little bit more pay and, um, though at this point, and they're still working on it, I am a senior retired with a pension. So None of the monies that I earn for the Super Bowl commercial residuals, none of my other residuals for like 40 years of work uh, count towards my insurance. So, so you're, you're starting over fresh. Well, it is. I mean, that is was one of the things that we were really fighting for. And at this point, they think that the coffers will fill back up and that they will probably be able to take that over. Um, there are some stringent things on AI. Um, I don't think enough. That's probably what half the actors think right now. But I do know how hard our, you know, uh, president and the, and well, everybody fought to make sure that that was uh, that we got some protection out of the whole thing. I, you know, I don't know. I sat about two weeks ago. I sat through a seminar on AI. Mind blowing. So I mean, you're, you're learning how to use it then so you can be ahead of the curve. Oh, honey, I didn't understand a damn thing that was going on. I was like, what? <laughs> what? And then you look at stuff and you go, oh, this is crazy. But at the same time, I read an interesting article about this one school here in California who um, has adopted the AI programs for reading. So kids create their own story. They pick a character and then it writes a story for them. And then they read the story to their classmates. And the teacher is finding that uh, reading has increased like 90 something percent. And any, any words that the kids stumble over, they have it in the next story so that they constantly see these words plus learning new words and the pronunciation and everything. So I thought, that's a pretty good thing considering California is some of the lowest scores and problems here. So I don't know. I'm, I have a feeling I'll be dead. <laughs> I will have, 
I will have been burned up and be sitting on somebody's mantle. <laughs> now, now, see, in your case, I think AI could be cool for you because they could just put you in stuff and pay you and just have AI do it for you, but you still get paid for it. Well, you, but you don't get paid. It's like you don't get paid as much. It's like a writer. Right now, a writer would, if they're creating a story for the two of you, and they would be writing and creating who you are, how you met, everything you, that you tell them, and they create this wonderful story. Now, if you go to J chat GBT, I think is what a lot of people are using right now, they have AI write the story. Then they give it to a writer to fix, mm -hmm. to heighten, to do all that kind of stuff. Well, if the writer creates it, they get paid a bundle. If they come in as the fixer, they don't get paid much. <laughs> so it's um, and, and the kind of the same thing as an actor. Now they're talking about trying to scan our bodies so that they can put us in different places and stuff like that. I mean, if they're going to scan me, I want to be a size two. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like bus going on <laughs> and, and an ass that moves really well. So, uh, you know, pardon me, but, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Though, as Patrika right now, I don't want to see me who have created my own, you know, when I first started in 60, not, I came to visit in California in 1968, and I had a casting director give me, I got to meet him, and, um, and I wasn't in the union or anything, uh, but my dad, who was in publicity, knew the publicity director, so they got me in anyway. So I got the sides, went home, learned the sides, went back. The casting director said, Oh my God, that was wonderful. But I just have to tell you, if you don't lose weight, you'll never make it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'd like to point out to him right now that I am two-time Emmy winning, four-time nominee. <laughs> and I have a bunch of other awards for doing stuff. So, um, you know, you can't let anybody tell you no if it's your dream. And um, I think that's the most important thing. But that's why I wouldn't want AI to really change my body unless I decided to do it. Mm -hmm. um, sure. You know, and it's like it's like taking a um, let's see, an amputee. Okay, so he has no arm, but they think he's wonderful, so they AI an arm on him. That's not who he is. Right. Uh, and. And I know that our um, disability community has been like fighting like crazy going, you know, you hire an actor and then you CG or AI that he has no legs. Then he gets up at rehearsal and walks away. No, because there are plenty of great actors who don't have one. But the studios, I mean, we're living in a time where a lot of the studios don't have wheelchair access, don't have a lot of things. So they go, we can't really bring somebody in right this moment. The same for somebody who's blind or the deaf and and signs. Um, it, it, it's a big thing. I mean, I'm on the disability community. Um, I have I directed a show um, a film for the uh, Easter Seals Disability Challenge. Uh, and it's very rewarding. And working with these talented actors, you you go, OK, I don't understand why somebody. Well, it's like hiring somebody with a fat suit all the time. Hello, I'm a good actor and I, I could do it, you know. Um, it, it's that kind of thing with that community and what AI could do to all of us at this point. So, in other words, they could, you know, have two people sitting at that microphone that aren't you. Oh, um, yeah. We're actually AI generated. I'm not even. <laughs> I knew you were a stinker going to come up with that. Bad boy. Bad boy. <laughs> So what what was what were you learning? At, what was the the seminar that you were at? Like what kind of things it were was, they? It was called um, a, 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 an introduction to AI, and um, it was all day long, and it was different people who did different parts of it. Um, some of it I understood, and others I was like, wow. And so I I am also um, on the performers executive group at the Television Academy here. And um, this was put on by the foundation, but I'm going to suggest that we open it, make a one of the performers uh, meetings or big groups that we have that we, excuse me, do it again and do it for the performers. Because I think in some cases it will ease people's mind, but in other cases it's going to freak people out. So, um, I mean, I know a couple of people that walked out after the day one going, "This our business, we're over, I'll never act again. 
And but they didn't sit through the second half, which had some stuff about showing that if um, if I do a film and they and they hear they go, oh, oh we've got to fill that. And, you know, in post we'll do we'll do ADR for that. So I would come in and, you know, lip sync my mouth and, and do several takes of what the line was that got missed. Now I can do it from home on my phone, huh? whatever, and email it in. And then they have AI do with my voice several different interpretations. Now I go, I listen. Excuse me. They don't have different voices. I still use my voice. But what they do is take, they can perfectly sync, perfectly sync what I say back into my mouth. In other words, it doesn't look I'm like I'm and Riley right now. Mm -hmm. What? You know, and <laughs> so, um, I mean, that was amazing to me. And But they also are required to call the actor or talk to the actor and say, which take do you like best? And then you can go like this. Oh, I don't like that one. They go gone. And then they'll go. Blah, 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 and they go, oh, I like this one. I think this one is what you want. And then generally the director goes, I agree with you, but. When I didn't want to influence you. <laughs> so, um, so we do have some protections. I'm not sure if we have enough that we want and stuff. Um, I'm sure at this point, if I'm wearing a green dress and they don't like the green on me, that I can change it to blue or something. That that's mm -hmm. all going on. And um, it, but it's just um, I don't know because of that. I, you know, I really have an Academy Award too. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, um, but I looped, I think the name of the film was, because and looped is ADR work. This is where the star said, I, I can't come in, I can't do it. And they're going, we got to get it finished. I can't do it. So they hire an actress who sounds like that actress. So um, it, it was a Southern piece. So I always get called in for that um, because I can go right into it if I need to, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Um, and I'm trying to think of the actress's name. Um, it was Blue Sky. And um, anyway, I can't think of her name right this moment. But she won the Academy Award for that movie. And um, one of the, I was hired to sing in the car with the family because she didn't want to come in and sing and, and do it. So I am singing for her. <laughs> so I go like this. I also have an Academy Award. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Uh, it's a crazy business. I don't want to do anything else. I mean, I was a credit yeah. manager for 20 years and acting part-time. Now I'm like, mm, you know, I don't think so. <laughs> have Have they made any progress on uh, paying you guys for the streaming stuff? They got a couple booths on that. And, you know, all the time that the studios were saying, we don't have the money, we can't do all this. Warner Brothers just built is getting rented to like about three blocks from my house used to be the old um, Warner ranch. And it was like a church was there and uh, houses all around. They've torn it down, leveled it, decimated it. They've just now working on a parking structure and they're building 16 new sound stages hmm. for streaming. Just about a mile away is the universal back lot. And they've just built like 12 or I don't know exactly how many, but when you're driving up one street, you kind of go one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, and they've built a whole bunch of them. Now I'm on this side of the valley. I'm in the valley. So I don't really know what Fox has done, or, but I'm sure they're building stuff for streaming too. Uh, and it's crazy. And now, you know, Days is on Peacock. So the only thing about Days being on Peacock, even though they're minor, they pay residuals. Whereas a regular soap on the network does not pay residuals unless they become foreign or unless they have to rerun a clip out of yours. So your face is there, you get paid uh, again. But they, there are no residuals in soaps unless they're foreign. Um, and if they're foreign, they're like 10 cents a show here, six cents a show here. So you're, uh, you're not going to survive on the foreign <laughs> residuals. So you're talking about they're they're making all those uh, new studios for them to make their own programming. They, their they own say stuff. they're all for streaming, yes. So, wow. but it's interesting too because we're getting a lot of um, 
which is going to put a lot of foreign speaking ADR workers out of business because now with AI, they can go, okay, we need this to be um, a Swedish accent. Well, <laughs> that's voice generated because a lot of people can't come in. They do have, they do have Swedish speaking ADR people that could come in live and do it. But now, um, and I don't know what their protections are because I don't do a lot of voice stuff, but it's, um, they can perfectly sync to the mouth Swedish. So when they're dubbing, they don't have to hire people anymore. They want it Portuguese. Okay, here's a Portuguese voice translation going perfectly. Um, so yeah. it's, so it, the, the face of AI is changing things. The face of streaming is. I mean, I did during a COVID, um, uh, which there were so many protocols, it was unbelievable. But but they were for my safety as well as everybody that was working because they had to finish these product, this product. Um, I, I dubbed a Spanish film and I dubbed a, a port, no, um, a Russian film or a Polish. I'm not really sure which one it was, but the lady who was doing the Spanish, she, and I had to do my lines. They're showing me what they want me to say in English. And she goes, <laughs> And then the line was, hello. <laughs> and I was like, really? Is that all? Can you add something there? Because it's not, hello. It's not going to work. And the lady from um, the, the East, like Russia or wherever, um, she didn't move her mouth at all. She was like, <laughs> you know, and it's like, my whole brain is going, this is not something you're cut out to do. This is. This is, and then, and then they had all this dialogue and I go, but her mouth isn't moving, you know? <laughs> so anyway, and I'm sure at this point, AI would fix that, but they would have, they would have a program now that would replace me. So a lot of people that dub in other languages and even in English, because that's on the category too, they can perfectly sync the mouth to the dialogue. So like I was saying before, if I'm at home, filling that line in that they want, they can now take it and perfectly match it to my mouth. So it doesn't look like I'm little one step behind or one step ahead. So, um, I, I mean, it's just amazing. Um, at the same time, I'm kind of glad I'm old. <laughs> because I mean, it's a lot of jobs are being cut out and there are so many young kids coming up that may never get a pension and will probably have to have two or three jobs keep their acting going alive so hmm. speaking of of uh voiceover work and kids uh when you did rango how do you compare that to like doing the voice work where they do the ai or the translating stuff <laughs> well that was very interesting because um it was is with johnny depp you know that so we were um but usually you go into a sound stage at, to work uh, uh, like your studio you go into the studio, you're all by yourself and you do all your lines. Then the next actor comes in and does all his lines and they go together. But on this one, Gore Verbinski was the director. He had us all going. Everybody was there. When you came in, he said, get something that goes with your character, a costume piece, a hat, something. You know, what? <laughs> <laughs> so now we're like, you know, there are people with guns on and people with cowboy hats and chaps on and aprons and little, you know, bonnets on their head. And we're all like going, what the hell is happening? What's happening? <laughs> anyway, so he would rehearse us all talking at the same time. Not cutting one another off, but talking, doing our lines live. Then he would take us over and put us kind of in this batten thing where mattresses are on the wall and things are up there like this. And we would do it that way. <laughs> that was how the recordings were done. And then there was one whole scene where we were all, the, the characters are all dancing. I'm, if you saw it, you know that there was, a, the yeah. rats are dancing with the mice and the chickens and whatever. Um, he, he hired a professional dancer to come in and choreograph it because we all had to do the dance live because the animators wanted to see different movements and stuff. They just didn't want to draw it, which was wild. And then I remember one other time, Gore Verbinski is talking to Johnny, 
And now, meanwhile, Johnny's in a hat and a thing around his neck and a gun's on his hip like this. And he's going to, he's saying to him, now, I really want you to go in here and I want you to do all this. And I want, this is how I want this to go like this. And all of a sudden, he's kind of done. And Johnny kind of turns to the other actor and goes, isn't this animated? Like this, it was kind of like, <laughs> at which point the entire place lost it at that point. But uh, it was truly, it was truly a great experience. And I think that animation is unbelievably good. I mean it's a whole new step into animation and stuff. So. Yeah. And it's a fun story. Me and my son, he's 12 now, but we've watched that a bunch of times. And there's the, the famous line where he's like uh, one bullet. So we say that all the time, just random. Oh, one bullet. Well, I got the no like, reason, yeah, no reason, to, but it's fun. Sometimes you can kind of look at people and go one bullet. <laughs> it all depends on how you would say it. Then yeah. It's like, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, this is oh that's a bullet. So I like it. I like it. I, it kind of reminded me so much of Chinatown. You a little bit, but the water uh, and stuff like that. I'm going. Yeah. This is animated China. Yeah, but there are some there are some funny funny scenes in that. Uh, you actually did more than one character in that. Yeah, that I mean it's kind of like being when I did um, Babe. <laughs> I'm real good at being sheep and cows and chickens and <laughs> and then but on this one I was just a rat one time and then another rat which was a hick rat so I was like <laughs> talking very nice like this and then suddenly I was like shoot the bastard out of the fur the fur goes right like uh, fun fun lots of fun 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 so uh, what are you doing for fun on an average day. What, well, what are you doing to keep your your brain occupied? Oh well, um, I, I, as I said, I'm with the work with the TV Academy, so I have things to do there. Um, right now, they're having their FYCs where you go and look at the thing, and they have a little party, and then afterwards, and or you have to get, you have a talk back to the actors that are doing it, and or and or the director and writers. Um, so that's how we pick who we want to nominate. Um, I'm also a member of on um, the board of the Falians, which uh, we in uh, December we did our big ball that we raise money all the time um, for our um, Operation Mend at UCLA, um, and we tr we kind of give them like two hundred thousand dollars every quarter or every every tw twice a year I guess it is, um, and the Thalians, which was started way back with um, uh, Jane Mansfield and Debbie. And a couple of things. It was a big Hollywood thing. I mean, it was unbelievable. Frank Sinatra got an award. He was a Thalian. Um, well, Carrie and Debbie both were there like this. Um, I'm sure Todd was probably there. And he, you know, he's been very generous to the Thalians also. Um, but we want to take care of the returning vets' mental health. So Operation Mend is taking care of PTSD, but also like burn victims who come back that are totally you know, they're not who they were when they left and helping them get mentally back into it, like, which is terrific. Um, and um, the Operation Mend organization is fabulous. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping to be asked to be on their board too, because I think it's just terrific and they do so much work. Um, and, and I'm also an elk <laughs> and I'm also in the VFW. So I have a lot of things going on. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I try to stay active in those things if I can. Um, um, and then my husband um, has dementia started. So it's been, you know, a lot of me being here with him and uh, stuff because they can't, um, they did take his driver's license. So he, he is no longer able to drive. Um, so, and that was hard for him and still hard for him. Um, so, you know. Uh, those that takes up most of my time at this point because to remind him to take the pills, feed the dog, lock the doors, do all these kind of things. So, um, and I'm getting ready to play in the George Lopez Golf Foundation uh, uh, golf tournament that's in May. Um, and they, his foundation does camp for kids that have mm -hmm. kidney surgery coming up or kidney surgery they've done or any, you know, that long. They can't really go to normal camp a lot of times. Some of them are on dialysis which can be done there i mean or getting ready to face all that so they at least they're with um similar kids because everybody's kind of going through it and it's you know it just raises a lot of money so it's a fun golf game um my handicap is 36 
I was just about to ask you, are you any good at golf? Yeah, you know, I'm pretty good on my short game because that's where the dough is. Hey, hey, hey. Ah, yeah. And also, I cannot drive as far as a lot of the men do. Sometimes I can uh, if I hit it just right. But I'm not sure what's going to happen because it's been a little stiff for me with my broken shoulder. So mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping I can <laughs> hit the ball at least with my chipping and my putting. It's going to be good. That, that's where you make your money. Yeah, I hope so. Like I hope so. So anyway, but it's a lot of fun because it's a lot of the medical people that donate that come in. And um, so it's it's a huge party. And the after party the, after everybody golfs is a big dinner. I mean, lots of food donated from different restaurants and different things. Liquor flowing like there's no tomorrow from um, and that's all donated, too. So it's just a wonderful uh, uh, event. Uh, Linda Small is the coordinator. And um, so it's it, it's amazing. She's she's phenomenal. She needs a raise, George. OK. I'm going to <laughs> anyway. well, it, it does. For somebody who thinks they're not that active, you've got a lot. of. <laughs> going on. I know. If you look around, I have eat your lunch, take your pills all on the wall and stuff. And, you know, well, and now, are, you, are you a big fan of post-it notes? Because I use those all the time. Well, uh, I have post-its everywhere. And then I have things with scotch tape because, you know, in this heat that the glue dries out. On the, and then I go, oh, the hell happened to those notes? I mean, here, you can see over here, there's one on the there's door one. here. There's some on my china cabinet. Oh, I mean, it's like, uh -huh. you know. See, now I've, I've got a, a dry erase board magnet for my fridge. Oh, I'm a big proponent of that. So you can write stuff on there. Like I like to write on there when my milk's going to go bad. So I remember to at <laughs> least crack the top before I throw it in the trash. I, I take a, um, take a magic marker. Like I've opened tomato sauce and I've only used half of it. This was opened on this. So I know, okay, don't eat it in March. If it's was opened in November. No, don't do that. No. We'll all be in the hospital. Uh, so those kind of things. So, uh, but I've got notes everywhere and it's, I can't just put it one place because mm -hmm. sometimes he doesn't know to look there, but he does when he's going out, Oh, I have to go take my pills. Did I take my pills? So he'll come back and check and it just keeps him and everything is where it, you know, it needs to be for him. So, um, you know, that's the most important thing is not, um, not feeling confused all the time, just keeping that normalcy going on. So. Yeah. yeah, you guys have been married a long time, if I remember from your Instagram page. Yeah, we got married. We um we celebrated our fiftieth wedding anniversary in December. Yes, yeah, that's a that's a good run. That's a long time. Uh, well, I recommend you marry your best friend, and just remember that marriage is a hundred a hundred, not fifty fifty. Because if you come in only half of yourself, it's not going to work. So yeah, yeah, I didn't do so good. <laughs> <laughs> In fairness, I did make it over 20 years before that, you know, when you marry your high school sweetheart, you guys become different people as you get older. So that's kind of where that went. And well, I, we were both, um, I was uh, 25 and my husband was 33, I think at the time. So uh, we, we weren't high school sweethearts. We got all that foolishness out of our way. So, yeah. yeah. And if I at this point, I would recommend women wait till they're 30 and have just a hell of a good time at this point. <laughs> I, would, I would agree. Yeah. Just yes. have a good time. But, you know, it was a lot different for me because in the 60s, the birth control came around and now they're taking those rights. And I don't look good with a white hat and a red cape. So um, I'd probably be the bit. <laughs> no, I don't think I could do that either. That it put me off so badly on some of those things. And. Anyway, so so you mentioned you uh, went out to California. Uh, was it intending to be an actress, or were you just there on like to see palm trees? Well, <laughs> no, I you know I well I went to I went I came to visit my aunt and uh, who lived out here, and she wasn't really my aunt; she was my mother's best friend. She'd lived with us for a while anyway, and she lived here. So um, I came out to visit her in '68 for a week, I think it was. Um, or maybe it was the full, no, it was just, no, two weeks. I came from my two week vacation. Um, so, and I had friends that lived here. So um, my aunt was like, I can't go to Disneyland again. <laughs> but my friend said, let's go. And when that happened, you have to remember we had the E tickets, the B tickets, the C tickets, because you had the rides wouldn't let you on with a C ticket if it was an E ticket, right? <laughs> 
now you can't afford to go in there if you've got four kids. Even if you've got one kid, it's so expensive. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, I came out. My um, First of all, my dad was friends with the head of 20th Century Fox's PR department. So I, I said, well, daddy, and you know, what good is daddy if you don't help me? You know, so <laughs> my dad arranged for me to meet him. He took me to uh, 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 dinner, lunch at the commissary. So, and I was like, oh, look who's over there. Look who's over there. Look who's over there. <laughs> that kind of thing. Totally fangirling out. Um, and then um, it was Eddie Foy, uh, the third, that um, was the casting director. He was so... He was very kind. Um, and, uh, you know, here's the thing. Um, do you have any? Do you, and I said, no, I think it's pretty cut and dry. And um, and I learned it back and forth, up and down, sideways and everything. And went in and did it for him. And he just was like, wow. I mean, but he did say you, you know, at your size and your weight, you won't make it. And it, you've got to lose weight and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. so and. I didn't. I came out here in 1970, <laughs> you know, and then was auditioning here and there. I've never had to replace my roof so many times. But um, if I got a job, that was auditions. And usually I tried to schedule them at lunch so I didn't have to worry about that stuff. But um, then if I got the job, which I did, honey, I started on the Jeffersons, Give Me a Break, all those shows back in the, you know, uh, different strokes. Uh, I, I I mean, a lot of them. Uh, uh, yeah, you were on a lot of TV shows. How about you give me a bone here and tell me who was the biggest dick you ever had to work with on TV? Well, you know I'm not going to tell you out loud, but there was one. There was one. There was one. Um, and, and yeah. Yeah. So when did you realize, like, holy crap, I'm a, I'm a real actor and I get paid to do this? Like, when was that moment for you? When the man said to me, you're a woman no more than a goat. Don't ever contradict me again. <laughs> and I went, bye. And I <laughs> called my husband and said, I'm giving him two weeks or 20 minutes. And I told the president of the company, I'm giving you two weeks or 20 minutes. And you're lucky I'm not going to sue your ass. Um, so <laughs> he came back to me and said, the guy says he can't work with you either. We'd only met one time. And unfortunately, I sort of corrected him because he was new. But I knew the books and what was going on. And so I said, fine. I had my pictures off the wall, my stuff loaded up, and it was out the door in 20 minutes. And if not, look back. Hmm. Uh, and that, I think two days later, I had an audition for uh, a stage show called um, Cheatin'. Uh, we did that show at a little theater that's no longer there. It's the Greyhound bus station now, uh, right next to a meth lab. Uh, not a meth lab, a meth, a dome. <laughs> Those are two different things. <laughs> well, I know. One is they're brewing. The other one is they're helping. Um, anyway, it was where they were helping, but you never knew who was going to come down the, la the alley hmm. <laughs> when you're there waiting to go on through the other door. So, um, But uh, Del Shores wrote that piece. Um, we got rave reviews. Um, and then he wrote another show called Daddy Stein, Who's Got the Will? Uh, to which myself and Molly McClure got to reprise our roles from the stage show. Uh, and that was ABC ended up putting me under contract from that show movie. And so I've been doing stuff all the time since then. So it's been wonderful. Um, and that led to Step by Step, which was my first big pie, you know, series. And it was a blessing because I didn't have to audition for it at all. I didn't have to go to network. I didn't have to do anything. And, um, I mean, the rest is history. So hmm. do you got any cool souvenirs from any of those, those shows you were on? Like, um, yeah, I know some of those you're only on for one episode, like a sign show that you're like, no, they, pretty much guard, they pretty much guard the prompt. So it's <laughs> not good. I do have a, um, cookie jar from, uh, daddy Stein that I took from the set, but I asked for permission to do that. Um, so it, it's great. And uh, I mean, I've had a great time. So, um, and I'm, uh, listen, honey, I'm a hoarder as it is. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's, more stuff than my garage is like, who the hell lives? What? You know, it's like, what, uh, what do you, what do you collect? Like, are you a 
memorabilia I love, collection. I love, I love old hat pins. So I've collected mm. old hat pins when I'm, I walk by a, like a, 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 like, what do you call it? A rags and shop. Here's one called Play Store. Um, and this is an ex dancer from Bottoms Up that I worked with when I did Bottoms Up, the Vegas show. And um, we performed a lot in Texas with that. So um, she started a whole business there. So I've gone in there to see what they have. And a lot of little antique shops going through there and stuff. And I've been to like, if I'm in Georgia or I was in Tennessee one time out and we went by one and I bought one there. And then I'm trying to figure out how the hell I'm going to get this pin. <laughs> the, and first of all, I put it in my hat because I was wearing a hat. It was windy. So I put it in my hat and there, the, you go through the ding, 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 ding. They go, what's on this? They're frisking you like this. And I go back in frisky again come back again to go back through again. They can't figure out what it is. So then they have that person feeling you up and they, they don't find anything, but they ask you to do it again. Ding, ding. Well, I went, maybe it's this, <laughs> <laughs> which I promptly had to put into my, you know, carry on thing. And, and, and I thought they were going to make me toss it. And I was terrified at that point that I was going to lose this thing. I just spent like 50 something dollars for <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, that's kind of what I was collecting. And I always tease my husband, I collect eggs. So, <laughs> so I love finding little tchotchke eggs things. I'm trying to think. I've got a port, um, uh, one in the front room right this moment, but I don't see any here I could show you right now. So, uh, but I did, I used to have an egg, my egg collection. So, so you're not really into the high dollar collecting of no. Mercedes or BMWs or no. anything. Like no, that. I drive a Lexus. It's in 2017, so it's not. No, no. <laughs> uh, see, I, I pegged you for a muscle car woman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm more like um, my dream car would have been like a, a, a SL convertible, Mercedes SL what 450? I think it was. But I did have a Mustang in the 60s. Hey, I was hot. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, that happened. <laughs> but I did yeah. have a, I did drive a Mustang for a while. Yes, yeah, so a 60, a 65, 66, 65, I think it was. How long did you manage to hold on to that car? Uh, not very long because it was called a loaner. My dad had all these deals with the ball club and stuff. So I got that loaner car. I think it went to a big, huge 69 Plymouth that came next because that was the next <laughs> loaner thing. It was like, it's push button stuff here. And it was like, this car's eight blocks long. So yeah. 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 Those, those cars were huge. I used to have a, a 77 Cutlass and I would just run into things all the time. Never a scratch on it. I, well, I had a, um, what is it? What was it? I'm trying to think. It was a Ford. It was a Ford something. I can't remember, but it was a convertible. Mm -hmm. And I love that car. But um, coming home one night and from an event, the car went, woo, <laughs> had to pull over. And the guy tells me, oh, you cracked your block here. Now I'm, this was before cell phones. So now I'm on this deserted kind of road. And uh <laughs> I took a ride from a stranger, but this is in the days where you could hitch. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was ever going to make it home or ended up strangled in the pond by my car. So <laughs> well, sometimes you got to flip the coin and just well, take the you ride. Know, sometimes you go like this. Well, he looks okay, but I've been watching criminal minds. I was out of my mind. To get that car. Hey. But it, when you're in your twenties, you're invincible. Uh, I was going to say, you know, I I've, Broke down a few times in my 20s and you're in the middle of nowhere and somebody pulls up and you're just like, well, I guess dead's better than standing here all night. Let's go. It's cold out here. Yeah. It's cold. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, but what the, my guardian angel was taking care of me. I there guess. you go. What the, what's a movie that you've watched a bunch of times that you wish you were in? Oh, wow. That's hard. Um, I, I just watched I, because TCM is doing all the musicals and any one of the musicals from the 40s, I would love to have been in there. I would have bet Betty Hutton was like my idol at this point. And, and she went right to Thelma Ritter as a character actress. So I had those going on. But I think, um, you know, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers was fabulous. I mean, uh, American in Paris, but there's a ghost story from the 40 something I wish I could have done, though I really don't know if there was a part in it for me. I just was like, oh, yeah, I'd like to do this. Um, 
and and I'm, I'm surprised that nobody's remade remade it. Um, and it's called The Uninvited. Now it's not one of those thrasher, those horrible things that come up and get you like this. It was this ghost story, and it was kind of a love story. Ray Meland, Ruth Hussey. And now I can't tell you who the leading lady is because it was me all the time. <laughs> um, but it's wonderful. I mean, it's a wonderful little love story um, and um, beautifully shot and stuff. I I'm afraid if they did remake it now with all the uh, CG and all that kind of stuff, it would be more scary. But I do remember watching it um, back in my early 20s, teens, and I was like, <gasps> but again, I was the the young so. You know, you can do anything you want. You should make a part two. <laughs> there you go. I yeah. should. If I suddenly was loaded, I would do that. I would say, let's do this. Well, but there's another one that I always liked that I knew I could have been in. And that was uh, Rod, uh, Robert Taylor's uh, Westward Ho the Women. Um, it, it's like 100 women traveling to, as mail order brides. And listen, honey, I could have been a bride. One of those, you know, yeah. that was a, that was a good movie too. So well, that's funny. Is that, so I don't know. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that one. So it's one dude trying to get a hundred women. <laughs> it's really got, it off with, there's like three, there's like two basic ones. John McIntyre was the older guy who was trying to organize all of it. And Robert Taylor was helping him get them back through the past and stuff. So before they ever get to go, they've got to know how to drive the wagons. They got to know how to shoot a gun um uh so that all goes on and uh, they go through indian attacks one of the wagons while they're trying to go up falls back and another one jumps off and kills a kid and the woman is never right and she's like crazy person um uh and then there was kind of a marjorie main character and i was like that's me <laughs> yes. uh but it was they ended up hiring a couple other guys who uh uh were supposed to help out and there was too many shenanigans going on with them. And uh, so, but it, they end up getting there and uh, it turns out great. So it was very nice. Very nice. Can you ride a horse and shoot a gun? Yes. I'm better with the gun than I am riding the horse, but I can get where I'm going. I could, <laughs> I, but I can drive, I could drive the, this thing. Uh, there's some funny pictures. I wish I could show you right now, but I don't have the foggiest idea where they are of me trying to get on the top of a Clydesdale. That's a that's a big animal. Oh my god! It's like you're looking up at its back, going, "There is no way I'm gonna get my ass up there." So, <laughs> no. But that was a beautiful thing. But I have I did take uh, English learning and Western because as an actor, you're usually called to do that. And if they asked me, I would hire somebody immediately to get me going, and I would be yeah. doing the thigh master like crazy because that's how you hold on to the yeah. horse. Um, though. Uh, one time I got lost in the Angeles forest with four other people on horses. What was supposed to be a, <laughs> what's the thing about a three hour trip? <laughs> Gilligan's Island. Well, yeah. this was like something that was supposed to be a, you no, know, we left it, you know, I think we left at eight and we are seven and we were supposed to be back by noon. <laughs> Midnight. We still are lost. <laughs> the map they were following. Um, they, it didn't say that you end up at a cliff, that, that, you know, so this is not going to be good. Anyway, after all this, one time I threw myself in the dirt and said, just leave me here to die. I can't ride anymore. <laughs> and, and nobody's telling me that a snake crawled by me at this point. But um, so I got back on the horse because there's a light up here. we got to go and you got to ride. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, God. So getting back on that was tough. But then we get there and they had um, the, it was a guy was so nice to us. He drove up with his Jeep to open the gate because two of the lady, two ladies had to climb over and walk towards the light while the, we stood there holding their horses and our horse. And we had to be on that horse just in case anything else slithered by or the horse went crazy. Anyway, this the guy that owned the house, the way the light was, he came, drove them back up in his Jeep. They got on the horses. We followed him down. He, um, you know, had big troughs because he had his own horses uh, so our horses could drink. He took us inside. He said, here's the phone. Please call it. Because people thought, where are they? It's midnight. They were going to be back at noon. Um, so it was kind of scary. And um, oh God, when I think back, on, I could have been dead again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> guardian angel. I got a great guardian <laughs> angel. Uh, uh, anyway, then they said, okay, 
there are people coming to take the horses and we're going to drive home, but we have to, we have to ride a mile to get there. <laughs> so I was like, oh, please, I can't get back on that horse. <laughs> on that horse. But I did. We went there. See, the, I, next, the next day I had an audition. Oh, no. It was a Disney audition. And so I sang my song and the director goes, do you know a lovely bunch of coconuts? <laughs> now, honey, the stage was two inches high. Stepping up on that stage was the worst. Well, not as bad as shingles, but it was pretty bad getting up there. And now I got to shake them and do stuff doing that number. So I'm like, yeah, you're, but here's your, your coconuts. But so, uh, I mean, th those things <laughs> vividly stay in my mind. So like this, but yeah. That, that was probably the, the meanest version of that song they'd ever heard. <laughs> it was because <laughs> shaking my bazoombas in my butt was like something else, but I did it. I mean, like, you know, I didn't get the part after all that agony, but it was probably because I looked in pain <laughs> part of the time. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think the problem with your map was is whoever had it, every time the horse turned, he just kept the map <laughs> the same direction. So that's when you guys got lost. But we did lead <laughs> off with the map. We started with the map. But now keep in mind you're gonna be back at noon. It's daytime. Five o'clock it starts getting dark and it gets cold here because we're in the desert. <laughs> anyway, wow. and I'm going, this was supposed to be three hours. What's happening? You know, at one point I it was <laughs> And that, you know how you, with your thighs. One point, my thighs didn't want to hold on anymore, and they took my horse to lead it. And I'm holding the horn to stay on the horse because that's just how bad it was by that time. Because, well, I guess I should also mention I hadn't ridden in about a year. So, <laughs> wow. But fun, and I'm still here. So, and yes, if they called me to ride that horse and shoot that gun, yeah. Um, oddly enough, we I learned to shoot when I was on step by step because we had some crazy guy that said he was coming down to kill all the women on the show. I, I don't, don't know what that's about, but um, mm. Stacy Keenan's mother said, you know what? I saw this class to learn how to use a gun. Uh, it's being taught by Paxton Quigley and it's armed and female. And she taught us how to clean it, how to handle it, safety measures, everything, loading it, always checking all that kind of stuff. Um, so I am accurate with my right hand, 357 Magnum, the long one. This way with my right hand, this way with my left hand, I will hit you between this area right here. And the first thing you taught all of the ladies is you do not shoot to wound, you shoot to kill. Because that's, that's good this advice. Is a nice yep. big target. Shooting mm. at the leg or shooting at the arm is not a big target, uh, which everybody kind of went, what? <laughs> like this. Uh, <laughs> and so we learned to do, and we learned like sitting down, coming up, shooting between our legs if, you know, we were in bed and whatever. And, um, you know, just accurately with both hands. So, I mean, I did learn that. I grew up with my dad had a gun all the time, as I remember, and it was on his headboard. But it was, you know, that was one of those times where you didn't get a timeout if you touched it. You got the belt, you know, that was, you know, so we knew. We know we never touched that gun unless he was showing us how to do it. So, so. Hmm. Well, that's uh, that's pretty scary. I'm never going to go right. knock on your front door and you know, <laughs> uninvited. That's well, you know, we, we had like uh, we had be, not beware of dog, but dog in yard. And I've got a security system. But I hung my my, you know, the thing you should the target. I hung the tar target on the window and said, <laughs> don't worry about the dog. The woman owns a gun. And there was the target where you could see. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, fun stuff. Fun. I don't know how the mailman felt about it, but it was good. <laughs> Yeah, he probably just threw your mail in the front yard and kept walking. <laughs> True, <laughs> probably, probably. All right, Casey, what else you got for her? Uh, I I just had a question about the AI. So um, going back to that, <clears throat> like when, like you're you're an older woman, so like let's say they hire you, and then instead of like hiring someone younger, like uh, to play you, like there there has to be like a a 20 year old patrika and they want to you know a cgi your face is, does that benefit you or 
you know, like, well, would you rather that, have them I, have someone well, else or? Well, I would prefer that they use an actor. I mean, why put an actor out of business? So I would prefer them trying to find a Zoftig, somebody that looks like me or put the same color hair on her. And, and, and then we have very talented directors, lighting and camera people who could make sure that they don't always see the face when something's happening. Um, that, you know, they shoot over the shoulder or, um, or that you only see a little bit of the face or something like that. Some, when they're trying to make that 20 year old go there and stuff like that. I remember on days there was a rape scene and I was being raped in my twenties and they hired a young lady to do it who was wonderful. And she got the hell beat out of her all day long. So it was, but, but she got paid. She really got her salary work. So I would prefer always yeah. that an actor get the job. Hmm. But I, sure. it's kind of like that. Yeah, that makes that, sense. That thing was looking at going, wow, dubbing's going to be eliminated, or unless they can figure something there, I don't know. But it's, it's wow, wow. And you know, Bob Bergen, who yeah. was a governor with me at the TV Academy, he's the voice of Porky Pig, and several other things because he's done a number of, you know, I think some kind of duck he was at one point, and I don't know, Tweety Bird at one time. <laughs> um, so he he's. That's who he is, an animated voice person, as well as being an on-camera, but he's made his living very much as a voice actor. And you kind of go, at this point, they can, they've can, they got a voice. I mean, they can go back and pull Mel Blanc's voice out, which was kind of the original person, and do it and stuff like that. But no, I'd rather they let Bob do his work, and I'd let all voiceover people do their work. So it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it is really crazy. I mean, we use like you mentioned that ChatGPT. I use it almost every week for the descriptions because, like, for these podcasts, I'll take the transcript of the podcast and I'll put it into ChatGPT, and then I'll say, "Could you write a YouTube description for this episode with hashtags?" And it's like within you know thirty seconds, it comes up with a short description for YouTube with the hashtags, and it's amazing. And like I've been playing around with it. You were saying about the writing stuff. Like I've been playing around with it, like trying to write things and mm -hmm. I've never, I've never written anything really in my life. So like I'll write something and I'll, I'll take it and I'll put it in, I'll type that and put it into chat GPT. And I say, make this better. <laughs> it's like, it, and it again, takes all but of they, my words. And then... Again, they can't make it better because they don't, they're not a thinking brain. So that's why I said earlier, right. when, you know, when, when a G, chat GPT or whatever they're using, excuse me creates the story that 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 the, the producers and people everybody loves we want this story but then they go uh could you like fix it to a writer well he he has to go back and he has a thinking brain well it would be better if the villain did this at this time you know and then there's a suspense thing where um you know they can change it to a very suspenseful thing and you think it's you that did it but it's really him not him either suddenly it's me we're i'm the kid so it's uh, that's the writer creating that kind of stuff. And it, it just I, I, I don't know, but it's the future. I'm sure they're going to figure out some way to handle it, but it's crazy. Yeah, it really is. It is crazy. Like our um, for these videos, like the it's another program for these videos. So I'll take the whole file of this video after it's finished, after it's edited. I'll drag it over into this program and then it comes up with it'll give me. 30 one minute long clips from this video of the three of us in the, in like so i can post it to like instagram youtube you know for those shorts and the reels and all that stuff and okay so part it, of it's gonna it, be it, on camera I, I do i look good i just oh yeah you look <laughs> you always look great yeah, you always look my, fabulous you know, this part is you get older and, you know, the testosterone rises up and the estrogen goes away. And I'm going to look like Ben Franklin in a couple of years. What the hell? So, hey, more, more uh, roles. <laughs> that would be true. I'm a Ben Franklin looking actress. Just, <laughs> what? There you go. Chat BT could make a big thing out of that one. <laughs> and uh, this this won't be out for a few weeks. Um, you have a birthday coming up soon, yes. April, April yes. 6th. So uh, any big plans for that? Uh, uh, well, I'm hoping to go out to dinner, but I'll be driving and making the reservations. <laughs> now, you know what's so great is Anthony Turk, who's the publicist who you talk to all the time. He, um, he, uh, 
he uh, is like my best friend ever too. And he, uh, last year he put together a party. So I feel sure that he's probably going to do something this year too. And so, yeah, with cool. all my friends and I'm very blessed to have a lot of friends. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, plugs, where, where can people find you? Anything uh, that uh, you want people to see? Well, I'm on Facebook, but somebody opened a Patrika A. Darbo. That is not, uh, it's got a whole bunch of stuff, and but it's not me. Uh, I'm just plain Patrika Darbo on Facebook. And then on um, uh, Instagram, I'm Darbo Patrika. So now somebody took Bizbriar, which is the start of like my email, and put 2019. And I'm going, who the hell is Biz Briar 2019? I don't know who this is. You know, and suddenly pictures from somewhere else popped up. And I'm like, I, I don't get this. And so now I'm telling people, don't, please don't share anything there for me. If you want me to do it or answer or do something, put it, put it here. Um, my The email I use for my fans is uh, totofans at um, yahoo.com. Um, and I try to answer everything. I do have a fan club that Debbie O'Connor uh, runs for me. Uh, so you can contact her to get the information there, which if I thought about it, I'd have in front of me right now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she handles a lot of people, but um, she does my fan club. So, I mean, I'm out there. I'm everywhere. So, you know, and I hope you liked my, my um, fabulous, fabulous commercial for the super bowl it's my second one it was great yeah i i commented on your uh, post when uh when it popped up i i yelled i know her <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny because i mean i had a good time doing the peanut mr peanut commercial you know with charlie sheen which was great and the mobile bus jumping like crazy and stuff <laughs> so um those were fun and they and they uh, i think because of the they did so many of them. My one thing is much longer. Like the clip that was on the Super Bowl was much longer than some of the others. They're in, intercutting and stuff like that. But those are all, you know, stuff there. So yeah. So when you're when you're re, um, filming that commercial like that for that, do they tell you that it's going to be a special Super Bowl commercial or? They don't. Or... First of all, all my auditions, I didn't even know who the hell I was auditioning for. I mean, everything <laughs> is so damn secret. You know, you're uh... signing NDAs or. You know, you're sworn to secrecy until if you take a picture, you cannot post it until after it's run. And I mean, it's crazy. So, I mean, uh, now with everything, it's like now that there's 4011 streaming stations, I'm telling you right now, people are guarding things with their lives. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't want to be anywhere else, but it's crazy. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. This was great. Again, once once again. Thank you very much. I hope you guys are up to some good things too, and things are going on. And your, you said your son was twelve, and he likes mango. Please, please tell him thank you. <laughs> oh, I will. Okay. Well, then, guys, I guess that's it for me. And I, where the hell do I get out of here? Leave the studio. Okay. That's it. Thanks, guys. Um, I, you know, continued success. Um, I'll take care until I see you. Thank again. you very much. Till we All see right. you again. Bye bye. bye, -bye.